If you have been following the aviation industry, chances are you are familiar with the Airbus A220, which was formerly known as the Bombardier C-Series, a twin-engine narrow-body aircraft that could be used for short-haul regional flights, with some aviation observers suggesting that the aircraft could lead the future of narrow-body aircraft development. With the production starting with Bombardier and eventually with Airbus's acquisition of the majority stake of the program, there has been over 600 orders for the aircraft and over 100 has been delivered to date, with airlines such as Delta, Air Canada, Swiss, and Air Baltic among the most prominent operators of the aircraft. In the Asia-Pacific, so far the only customer and the operator of the aircraft is Korean Air, and so far there hasn't been much new orders for the aircraft in an otherwise fast-growing region. In this video, I'll discuss why there hasn't been much orders for the A220 in the Asia-Pacific region, but also the potential opportunities for Airbus and Bobadier in, in the region. For those who are not familiar with the A220 program, it was initially launched by Bombardier from Canada in 2012, and Bobadier was able to secure orders and deliver the aircraft of the C100 and C300 series to launch customers Swiss and Air Baltic in 2016. However, facing financial difficulties, the Canadian government provided financial assistance as the aircraft just so happened to compete with the smaller variants of the A320 family of aircraft, such as the A318 and the A319, even though it was designed to compete with the likes of Brazil's Embraer regional jets. Airbus would eventually acquire the 50% majority stake of the program in 2017, and since there were orders from US-based carriers Delta, it led to a trade dispute between Canada and the United States. So as part of the deal between Airbus and Bombardier, the aircraft for US-based carriers would be built in Airbus's facility in Mobile, Alabama, along with the rebranding of the C-Series to the Airbus A220. When looking at the specifications of the aircraft, it could be a good alternate for the Boeing 737 MAX or the Airbus A320neos, which both Boeing and Airbus have been heavily marketing. Both variants of the A220 has a much smaller capacity compared to the A320 or the 737s, and as expected, the estimated market price is much lower compared to both aircraft. However, something to keep in mind, especially for later on, are the advantages of the aircraft, which include a shorter length of runways needed for takeoff and a range 200 kilometers less compared to the 737 and A320s making the aircraft able to serve cities with smaller runways and those that are currently served by regional jets or, or turboprop aircraft. For the Asia-Pacific region, Korean Air is the only carrier operating the aircraft, with 10 of the A220-300 aircraft used on domestic flights within South Korea as well as flights in the region, including to Japan. The aircraft has some potential in China and Japan, though it will be competing with domestically produced programs such as the ARJ-21 in China and the Mitsubishi Space Jet. But the aircraft could find potential good use with smaller regionally based airlines. An airline that immediately comes to mind is AirAsia, which could use the aircraft for routes they'd like to operate but probably won't need the added capacity of the A320 or the A321s they recently acquired. The aircraft could be useful for their subsidiary in Malaysia as well as Indonesia, and they could be joined by their Malaysian counterpart Malaysia Airlines, which has announced a delay in deliveries of the 737 MAX and could look to the A220 as a viable alternative should they decide to cancel that order and get acquired by a private party. Another potential airline could be Garuda Indonesia, which has been reported to be considering phasing out their CRJ-1000s, which the A220s could help fill the void with a shorter length for a runway needed for takeoff, while providing more seats compared to the CRJ-1000. While I could espouse the benefits of the A220 for these airlines, the overall trend in the Asia-Pacific has been to boost capacity on existing routes, and with the growing trend of orders for the A321 and the long-range variant, the XLRs, some may question the viability of the program in the region. Another factor holding back the A220 program right now in Asia is the lack of familiarity with the aircraft and required support for maintaining the aircraft. While it's now part of the Airbus family, for pilots it's a different aircraft with a different pilot cockpit rating compared to the more familiar Airbus A320. So airlines will have to invest in training new or current pilots on the new aircraft. These were the very factors that have contributed to the looming decision by Garuda Indonesia on whether to give up on their CRJ-1000s, which in reports have cited issues of having to find pilots from overseas and a lack of product support in the region. 
with the support of the much larger giant Airbus, which has a large presence in Asia. The company considers the A220 as a vital piece to its overall product line, especially for narrow-body aircraft, filling the void between the smaller regional jets and turboprop aircraft and the much larger short-to-medium range aircraft. Advantages that Boeing, with the already heavily scrutinized Boeing 737 MAX program, currently does not have an answer to. What are your thoughts on the potential of the A220 in Asia? And which airlines and markets do you think would be best suited for the aircraft? Thank you for watching. This has been Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates from the aviation and travel scene from the Asia Pacific. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching and have a great day.